In this video, you are going to learn how to send an email with your C Sharp code. So we're going to use .NET and MailKit in order to, well, write a software that can send emails. So let's get started. Sometimes while developing software, you will find yourself in the need of mechanics to send, for example, emails using code. Maybe you're working on an e-commerce platform and you want to send email notifications to inform your customers about orders, updates, or maybe you want to send mass email promotions. So before we look into that, let's look at what an SMTP, so a simple mail transfer protocol is, which is what we're going to use. So if you have ever tried to set up a work or a school email using a mail application like Outlook, then you must have heard of the SMTP keyword before. SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, which is an internet standard communication protocol for email transmission. So mail servers use SMTP to send and receive mail messages. Now, since we probably use an SMTP server already like email, there is no need for us to host an SMTP server unless you want to manage your own SMTP server using AWS, for example. We will need a bunch of stuff in order to send an email through code. First, we need to connect and authenticate with an SMTP server. And in this tutorial, we will use Gmail. The Gmail SMTP server domain is smtp.gmail.com, which we will use to send email requests through an SMTP client. We will also need a Gmail account and we will use the email address and password to authenticate with the Gmail SMTP server. We also need a message to send, including the subject and body. After we have authenticated with the SMTP using our login info, we need to send the message. User level email clients typically use the port of 465 for SSL connections. So now I'm using a bunch of keywords. So what is this SSL standing for, for example? Well, SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer, which is a protocol for web browsers and servers that allows for the authentication, encryption and decryption of data sent over the internet. Some of you might say, but Dennis, an email might contain more than just text like HTML text or even attachments. How are we going to handle that? Well, luckily for this, we can use MIME. The world of networking is filled with scary, strange words that are actually abbreviations of more scary, lengthy words. But worry not, I'll explain everything. MIME stands for Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension, which is an internet standard that extends the format of email messages to support text in character sets other than ASCII as well as attachments of audio, video, images, and even application programs. To you as a C-sharp developer, you will need to create a my message object, give it some values and pass it down to other methods as parameters. And the mail library we will use is going to handle all the dark magic in the background. Now enough theory and let's jump into the code. But before we do that, we need to choose a library to use. Now, c -sharp provides an SMTP client located in system.net.mail in the namespace there, but it's not recommended for new projects. So here you see the message which says, we don't recommend the use of SMTP client class for new development because SMT client doesn't support many modern protocols. Use MailKit instead. So you see we're recommended to use MailKit. So let's use that. And by the way, if you like this video, then please leave a like. If it helps you out in any way, leave a like. And also please write a comment if you have any questions or ideas for future content, as well as hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on any future content that we are creating. So let's get back to the video. All right, so let's go ahead and create a console application which will send emails. So go to Visual Studio, create a new console app. I'm going to call this one mail app. And now the next thing that we all need to do is we need to make sure that we have this new get package. So here, let's go over to our package manager console. And here you can just enter install minus package empty space mail kit written like so. Then press enter. This will then take a little while until it installs the mail kit package for you. And then it will retrieve all of those packages. And once it's 
done successfully, you will see successfully install MailKit and the version that is the latest one when you're installing it. All right, so now that we have that, we can get started. For testing purposes, I would recommend to go over to your Gmail account, for example, and then manage your Google account because we need to make sure that one setting under security is set up accordingly. So under the security page, you will find a less secure app here. So less secure apps access. And you see in my case, it's turned off. So we need to turn it on. It's not recommended, but as of now for testing, this is going to make our life a lot easier. And now let's go ahead and tick this box. And now I'm going to use this account in order to send emails. By the way, in case you have the two-factor authentication enabled for that account, that won't work either. So you would have to deactivate that. So I would really recommend for testing purposes to use a separate account that is not your personal account that you're using for whatever business or personal stuff. All right, now back in Visual Studio, we need to add a couple of namespaces. So here I'm going to set up using mailkit dot net dot smtp because you can see here there are pop3 which is also one that you might know so it's a different way of the handling emails but we're going to use smtp here and then we will need to add mail kit this namespace as well and finally mime kit so the mime kit will allow us to create mime messages which will be more complex messages that we can write Okay, so the first thing that we'll need is going to be the my message object and I'm going to add that into my main method because we're simplifying this. So this will be a new my message which will of course only be available if you added the mime kit namespace. Quick pause. In this video you learn something about C Sharp and if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C Sharp developer then definitely check out my C Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C Sharp. So you're going to learn how to do the basics, how to use object oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C Sharp developer definitely check out the link in the description below. Then you will need to add the sender that will appear in the email message. So here you can use this my message dot from dot add. So you're saying this email or this message comes from, and then you need to create a new mailbox address object, which you pass two variables in this case, the name as well as the address. In this case, you can use whatever name. So here's something like Dennis or tester. Then you need to add the receiver. So where do you want to send this email to? Here you use the message object once again, and you send to, and here you add whatever email address you want to send this to. So here, this is an email address, and we are using the mailbox address dot parse method, which will then convert the string into a mailbox address object. And this parse method will then convert it into a mailbox address, which is going to be an internet address. So it inherits from internet address, which is exactly what this add method needs. So here, if you hover over it, you see it needs an internet address address object. All right. So when that is ready, we can go ahead and add a message subject. So the headline of your message by using message.subject. So this is the property that you need to overwrite and you can add your string here. And then you can add your message. So in my case, it's going to be this message here as I have set it up here. So message.body, which will be the body of the message. And here you can create a new text part. I'm going to say that this is going to be plain text. So that means that we're passing plain text and not something com more complex such as HTML, for example, because you can also use HTML here. All right. So this will be our message body saying, yes, hello, this is dog. Okay, because it says woof here as the subject line and we love dogs here. So that's why we can do it like this. All right, now that our message is ready, we need our email and password. 
what I'm going to use for this is going to be a way that I'm going to blur the password for the email address directly inside of the console. In order to achieve this, I'm going to use the following code. So first of all, I'm going to create this console write, which will now take this email address, whatever we're entering. That will be the email address that we want to log into. And then we want to get the password here. So in order to get the password, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur the text out. So you will not be able to see the text of the password. Therefore, what we're going to use is the following code here saying that we're going to change the console color first. So we're changing the background color and the foreground color to green. Okay, this way you will not see the password that I'm entering. This is just something that you can use for yourself. But in your case, you wouldn't really need this code here, which really just changes the background color of your console. And then of course, I want to set it back once I have entered the password. And this code here resets the background and the foreground color of our console. So if we run this, we should see our console coming up. And here I can enter the email address and then the password you see is going to be blurred out. So you can't really see the password here. So now that we have the email as well as the password, let's go ahead and handle the SMTP client connection. So in order to do that, we need to create an SMTP client. So here, this is this SMTP client class that we're using that is inside of our mailkit.net SMTP, which is a client that can be used to send email messages, which is exactly what we want. Then we want to add a connection or create a connection. The thing is, this can go wrong. Okay, so there are things that could go wrong. So let's go ahead and create a try catch block here. And to try, press tab twice. It will create this code for you. So I'm going to, first of all, make sure that I am catching errors. So here the exception, I'm going to call it EX and I'm going to use this exception message to write it onto the console in case something goes wrong. And then finally, what's important is if you start a connection, which we're going to do inside of this try block. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Once we try to connect to something, we need to make sure that we close the connection as well. So here, we connect to the Gmail SMTP server using port 465 with the SSL enabled. So here smtp.gmail.com with the 645 SSL port, and then we're passing true, which is the use SSL boolean. So we're saying, okay, we want to use SSL. So we're connected to the SMTP client that we have set up here using these details. These will be different depending on which mail provider you're using. In my case, I'm using Gmail because I think most of the, in most of the cases, Gmail will be the one that you're using. So if you're not using Gmail, use your own values here. Okay, now as we have created the connection or established the connection, let's make sure that we also disconnect. So let's go ahead and create this finally block. And now you can finally see when finally is being used. So if you haven't used finally in a proper manner before, this is one of the good applications of using finally. So this will be executed no matter if the try worked out or it didn't work out. In either case, it will disconnect the client connection and it will dispose of it directly after it. So dispose of the client object. The object will disappear, so to speak, or it will be deleted if you wish, disposed. Okay, so that by itself is not enough because here we are connected in the try block, but I want to do more in there. I actually want to authenticate as well and send the message. So let's first authenticate to the client. Okay, we are trying to connect to it. Now let's authenticate using our email address and password, which are these values that we have gotten from the input that we entered here, email address and password. Okay, so we are authenticating to the client and now the next step would be to send the message. So now inside of this client object or inside of the SMTP client class, there is the send method. And here you can just go ahead and send whatever text you want to send. So I'm going to send the message, which is this message right here. Okay, so the one that we created earlier, which is a MIME message. 
So if you hover over this send method, you see that it asks for a MIME message here, which is exactly what we are passing to it. Okay, so that's sending our MIME message. And now let's display the info of whether we sent the message or not. So display a message if no exception was thrown, it will just say email sent. Because if it didn't work, then we would jump here into the catch block and we would get an error saying that something went wrong. So now let's go ahead and run this. Let me log in to my email address there, then enter the password and then send the email. And in my case, it closed the application straight away. So what we could do is we could use console read line in order to keep the software open. But what's going to be more important and more interesting is if we receive the email. Therefore, going back to your Gmail account, you will find a new email from me, which says woof. Yes, hello, this is dog. So you can see now we have this email, which had the name of tester, which is exactly what we set up. And we sent the email using C sharp code. Now, of course, you could go ahead and make it more complex and add more receivers to the email and so forth. But that is generally how you can send emails using C sharp code. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you know how to send an email using C Sharp. If you think this video was useful in any way, then please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also check out the link in the description in order to get the C Sharp Masterclass highly discounted.